Futurecast. This week on the Deep Leadership Podcast. It's easier to lead somebody that knows why they're there. Who, yeah. who, they know who they are, they know what they want, and they know where the intersection is between what they want and what the team wants, what they want and what the institution wants. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. If you've been a longtime listener, I want to thank you for tuning in each week. The success of this podcast is because of your loyal viewership. Now, if you're new, welcome aboard. The purpose of this podcast is to build a world with better bosses. We do this by introducing you to the greatest minds working in the leadership space. Our guests are authors, academics, podcasters, entrepreneurs, business leaders, military leaders, and successful leadership practitioners in a variety of industries. Our goal is to provide you with practical information to help you along your leadership path, whether you're new to leadership or a seasoned pro. So thank you for listening in. It's an honor to be your host and leadership guide in this journey. Today, we have a fascinating conversation with Jeffrey Klubach, an authority on integrity and leadership. Jeffrey challenges the conventional wisdom of integrity and dives into a deeper meaning of this word. He explains that integrity goes far beyond just doing what you say. He shares his innovative integrity game, a 10-point model designed to help individuals, teams, and organizations achieve greater integration and accountability. This was a thought-provoking discussion that will leave you rethinking what it means to lead with integrity. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Jeffrey Klubeck. Jeffrey is an unretired professor of communication and author of The Integrity Game, which is evolving into a comprehensive soft skills development company. As a world-class coach, Jeffrey has worked with entrepreneurs and high-performance teams in 14 countries on four continents. He is also the founder of Get a Clue, Inc., which provides productivity and accountability frameworks for small and micro businesses and solopreneurs. Jeffrey is also the author of Get a Clue in 52 Soft Skills book series, and I'm excited to have him on the show to learn from his unique experiences. So, Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, John. It's great to be here. It is great to meet you, and uh, it's it's, it's great to uh, meet uh, someone like you with so much experience. And so I'm really excited to be talking about integrity. We're going to get to that in a bit. But first of all, tell us about Get a Clue and your background in the leadership space. Yeah, well, um, get a clue. You know, my last name's Klubeck, right? And so I decided I wanted to become like, it's, it's interesting. Actually, I used to be a headhunter and a recruiter. And, you know, get a clue. It actually was the name of a, 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 a an editorial that I wrote on the sports page back in high school. I wanted to get different people to read the sports page and go sell advertising on the sports page. So I created an editorial called get a clue. And I would try to upset some people and create some controversy and get people writing in so I could sell of uh, advertisements on the newspaper. That's how like way back when in high school. But as a professional, when I was transitioning from being a recruiter to a, a parent and then negotiating with my wife, like, how are we going to do this? Who's going to be with the kid or career and what's going on? Uh, I decided that I was going to form a C Corp, right? And you market myself as a consultant and get a real estate license and whichever one took off first, you know, consulting or real estate. And then I, I, I met a guy named Brian Trachel who said, oh, you're a coach. And I said, what do you mean coach? And they started talking to me about coaching as a, as a, as a profession, as a, right? as a way to earn income and help people with motivation and mindset and goal setting and time management. I'm like, wait, tell me more. So, so get a clue. There's my boutique C Corp that I've built my coaching practice through. Uh, and, and now it, it owns the integrity game, which is what we're going to talk about. So now everything that I do for a living, coaching, consulting, training, keynotes, speaker for hire, info products, it's all going to be packaged in integrity game. It's a better brand to grow up and evolve into to better spaces. So get a clue is, just, you know, it's cheeky and it's jovial and it's boutique. Uh, I don't take myself too seriously. So I have a lot of fun with my last name. 
Oh, that's great. I love it. And so many people do. I've got a friend, John Brubaker, and, and so everything is brew on his, you know, uh, it's it's Coach Brew and his, his podcast and everything. So everything yeah. around brew, and I love it. And I don't have a cool name like that, so I can't do it. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not for everybody. Some people are like, oh, Jeff, it's so cheesy. And I'm like, oh, happy clue year. And let me put you on my clues letter. And uh, that's, 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 that's perfect. I love it. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, like, I don't clear things up for people. I establish clucidity. And, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm having a beer with the fellas, then get a little clubrication. So it's, it's just all about like my, my behavioral style is jovial. When I you know, started teaching public speaking I, as a graduate student at City, you go stay. I realized, you know, I was fine with it, but I realized people were really terrified of yeah. public speaking. And then yeah. com- communication wasn't their major. It was general ed and they had to take it. And so they didn't want to be there and they were terrified. So I ended up, and I would take it personally before I realized, you know, how challenging it was. If somebody dropped out or if somebody wasn't doing well, I took it personally. So I really kind of developed this stand up comedy, you know, very vulnerable, uh, jovial, dad joke ish you know, uh, presentation or, or teaching style in the classroom to disarm people. And, yeah. um, you know, it stuck with me and it's, it, it's, you know, I just, it, it, humor is a coping mechanism for the tough stuff in life. And humor is a great Trojan horse to get people to think about things that they might not will themselves into thinking about. I love it. I love, we've talked about humor on this podcast too, before it's important. I mean, you know, I, in the military humor was like how we got through the day, you know, <laughs> that's right. Just, you know, it's like, Oh, look, we're not getting back to port, you know, for another three weeks. That's great. You know, it was just <laughs> sarcasm and humor was like how, how we lived our days, you know? So, uh, Absolutely. yeah, so I'm, I'm used to, it. it helps to diffuse it, especially when you're in a group of people all going through a miserable time together, humor kind of get you through the day and, and what have you. So very important part, I think it's an important part of leadership as well. Uh, and mm-hmm. having, uh, having a, you know, being serious about your job and not as serious about yourself. I think that's something that the that, that good leaders know how to do that. So, well, this podcast is about leadership and you mm-hmm. do deal with a lot of leaders uh, who are running their entrepreneurs or small business owners. There may, may be solopreneurs. How do you look at leadership? How do you define leadership? Well, yeah, it's, it's a moving target, right? So, so what I want to say about leadership is like, are you ready? The totality, mm. <laughs> that like the totality of forces that move things from A to B. Mm. All right. Yeah. So, like you know, like let's really cast a wide net, right? And so, a lot of times when this leadership conversation, qualities of a leader, traits of a leader, principles of leadership, and you you start to focus on the leader, you know, one person yeah. that's leading others. But I believe in leading from whatever seat you're in, you know, leading by example and leading by, by, you know, contribution or leading by asking questions, knowing when to follow as a function of all the stuff, the totality. So even somebody that doesn't have the title or the authority of leader, sometimes those are the best leaders because they inspire us from whatever seat they have on the team. They, they show up early, they're engaged, they do their jobs, right? They, 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 they cover the backs of their teammates. They're not, maybe not the leader, but they're leading. Yeah. yeah. And so I like to focus on the totality and I invite everybody to the leadership party. I absolutely love that. And, you know, it's, it, it, and being, you know, having run businesses for so long, I, I find the leaders like I, you, you find those natural leaders in every organization, yeah. you know, it's who's, who is that, you know, informal leader and who is everyone listening to and who is, you know, and it's about influence, right? It's more about, you know, what you're doing to influence others versus what your title is. And so for so many years, I've seen these informal leaders, like those are the people that get things done, right? They're sometimes the it's the, un- yeah. To. Sometimes yeah. it's the unassuming introvert that nobody quote unquote notices, but they're a fantastic listener for all the other alphas on the team. They're the one that has all the information. They're the glue that's keeping the team together. They're not hogging any spotlight, but they are making sure that, the group yeah. gets from A to B in their way. So yeah. we have to recognize all of the all of the contributions, the totality of leadership. It's it's everybody's responsibility, even though it may only be one person's title. It's everybody's responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Because I think those people that take leadership as is a title, uh, they, they 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 look for positional authority. I think that's the easiest leadership role to have, which is I'm in charge because I have the title, then I can tell everybody what to do. That's the easiest form of leader. The hardest form is, is I say, when nobody reports to you, but yet you're trying to get something done through influence. Those are the hard jobs. Like when you're, like I was a quality manager for a division one time, 
And I had a very small team working for me, but I had a very large responsibility for influencing the organization towards quality objectives. And nobody yeah. worked for me. All the people that ran production and, you know, and were, nobody worked for me. So it was a very difficult job uh, to, to influence all these people to move in a direction that was that I needed them to move into. And it was very, very difficult. So those. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a lot of influence. Yeah. Let's peel off the mask. Like, why do we call it leadership? Why don't we just go ahead and call it sales? You got to sell. Yeah. You, you yeah, right. You got to, yeah. you got to engage. You got to influence. You got to persuade. You got to promote. You've got to get yeah. buy in. You got to get engaged. You, like, we're selling. Why do we call it leadership? Why do we just call it sales? Oh, I know why. Because <laughs> most people, because <laughs> most people think sales is a four letter word when it's actually a five letter word. But, yeah. you know, we're talking about, you know, what yeah. is leadership? You know, again, it's persuasion, it's influence, it's all the things that you're mentioning, right? And yeah. And, yeah. And, and and here's when we, we're going to get into it, I think, you know, following your line of questioning, you know, we're going to talk about the integrity game, but, uh, you, you know, it's one thing to span boundaries and get buy-in from people that don't report to you and you don't have that authoritative or, or, or um, uh, transactional uh, consequence to the hold over them, if you will. You're not the, you know, they're not direct report, like performance reviews, a raise or salary or bonus or promotion. You're just a guy in the other department that needs something. Yeah. Right? But I, you know, I think the hardest really, I, I think that's easier in a sense than um, what I think is the hardest type of leadership, which is self-leadership and self-responsibility. And, and so again, a lot of times the common focus on leadership is on, you know, some person that's leading a group, but, we can lead from the bottom up or inside out or that when we, we talk about totality. So again, it's like, how do you lead yourself? Right. You know, how are you an, an empowered yes or empowered? No. You know, yeah. if somebody from the other department's coming over with some influence, how do you know whether or not to engage? If it's just whether or not you'll get in trouble from your direct supervisor, maybe that's not enough. Why? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we'll talk about, you know, the structural integrity um, for for individuals, for teams, for organizations. You know, we'll get into the integrity game, but in terms of like a definition for leadership, I want to get it as broad, as wide, as big. I want to use words like totality and right, so that we 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 begin to, you know, like I said, look within for our our level of responsibility for the collective things that lead us where we want to go. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, all that is important. And it's in, in, you know, we've covered a lot of those areas in, in, you know, in past guests, but I think lead yourself first is like something we talk about a lot. You know, it's a big part of leadership is what are you doing to lead yourself? And, and that's a big, that's a, that's a big place to start. And if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead others. Right. So. Right. Right. And, and, and it's going to be, it's like hurting cats. If, if you're trying to lead a bunch of people that aren't leading themselves, okay, that gets slippier or more slippery, you know, yeah. does that make yeah. sense? Right. Yeah. Uh, but I'd rather, I, you know, it's, it, I don't think I, it's easier to lead somebody that knows why they're there. Who, yeah. who They know who they are. They know what they want and they know where the intersection is between what they want and what the team wants, what they want and what the institution wants. So when we can integrate it, I understand and, and, and see the points of intersection between all of our desires, right? Why am I here? What does the team need? What does the organization need? Why am I here again? Okay, where's the points of? I'll run through a brick wall if, when I can again get, get that clear, right? On my right. my goals, how they intersect with the team's goals. My goals, how they intersect with the the organization's goals. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's switch over to the uh, let's talk a little, little bit about, about integrity. You've got this thing yeah. called the integrity game. Tell us about it. What is it? Yeah, well, the, <laughs> when when it's done, I'll let you know. Like we're growing it up right now. <laughs> It started off, you know, it started off as just a, a three-step dialogue in my coach's training. So I learned how to coach, you know, a couple of decades ago. And because I have experience in the classroom, I kind of created my own curriculum for training other people how to coach. It's important to scale too, because, you know, as I get bigger, I'm going to need other coaches that have trained that can, you know, when we get bigger projects. But um, inside of accountability, the, the portion of the coach's training that, that deals with accountability. And that's really the integrity game is. It's the Trojan horse to open up the, the accountability conversation. I'll come back to that in a second. But it started as a three-step dialogue. So, John, what, what would happen if you're meeting with somebody that you're leading and they commit to something in one meeting and then they get to the next meeting and they have not done what they had committed to do? Mm. What do you do? Yeah, that's that's number two on my expectation list is to do what you say you're going to do, uh, or okay. just let me know ahead of time uh, bef before update. Before yeah, due date. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the principles, right? So yeah. we when we're training coaches, 
right? All right, here's the deal, right? First of all, we're training the clients or we're training the direct reports. Like as soon as you know that you're not going to do what you said you're going to do, update your word, right? So now the thing isn't done, but your word is current. That's a way to maintain your integrity is to keep yes. your word current. That's the responsibility of the person making the commitment to manage their commitments. Now for us as leaders, we can't let people commit to stuff that we know there's a, a strong chance they're not going to get to. So yes. we have to guide and manage and support them in, in the care of commitment in the first place. But should they commit and then show up having not done what they said they were going to do, having not updated their word, what do we do? So basically inside the coaches training, there's a three-step dialogue. I got to get you to own it. I got to get you to understand the consequences and I got to get you to decommit or recommit. That's what the integrity game was. I just called it the, all right, now we got to play the integrity game. Instead yeah. of saying, now I got to hold you accountable. Now I have to confront you. Now I have to make you feel like crap. There's no, I don't have to do that, but I do have to play the integrity game. So why didn't it get done? What are yeah. the consequences of it not being done? And then are you going to decommit or recommit? Or is this thing just going to stay in an open loop in your mind? It's my job as a leader to help get clear on that and clean that up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what the integrity game was. And, it, you know, there's there's like, the, you know, origins, of like landmark education and all these leadership principles and, uh, you know, Tony Robbins, you know, mastery coaching. And there, it, it comes from places. Right. And, and, and but it's all about accountability. So, so fast forward after, you know, many, many, many years in coaching and teaching accountability, and I get paid to hold other people accountable and really getting into it. People think they understand accountability because they could pronounce it, but it's really more detailed than that. And, um, the, all the ego defense and all the smoke in the mirrors and all the storytelling and all of the, 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 um, letting ourselves off the hook. We judge ourselves by intent but everybody else is judging our actions. So the distance, yes. well, I didn't mean to, I was just trying to, I thought he wanted me to, or look, oh, you, you, you follow up the smoke and mirrors, right? So it's tough to hold people accountable, right? Back to leadership. One of the things that we want is permission to lead. It's easier to lead people if we give their permission. So how do we earn permission? How do we get engagement? How do we get enrollment? But back to the integrity game, it's like, that's, it's a 10 point model. That's how it's evolved. It started off as a little three-step dialogue. And I got an opportunity to do a keynote for the Specialty Advertising Association of California in, it was pre-vax COVID in 2020. And uh, it's like the first keynote I ever did from a hotel room where I recorded it and sent it to them and they played it for their audience on the, on the fifth day of the conference. But the idea is I put all these usual suspect topics when I was, you know, working with them on what I was going to talk about. And to me, the topics look boring. We can get bored of our own stuff, right? Time management and goal setting and yeah, and I just threw the integrity game in there to like kind of color up the list a little bit. And they yeah. show, they're like, well, this integrity game thing sounds interesting. So necessity breeds invention. And it just kind of came to me, like I developed the keynote and it, it came out being a 10 point model now, because I'm a communication guy and wordsmithy and I like to pay attention to the, the meanings of words and denotative and connotative usage and the vibration of language and words and the connection between words and emotions and so forth. Um, what I noticed is that most people have a judgment-based understanding of integrity. So when they use the word integrity, they're judging others, right? And when I would do keynotes or when I would do talks or, you know, in seminars and retreats and so forth, what happened was I'd say, how many of you believe you have integrity? And everybody raises their hand. Yeah, yeah. But a couple minutes later, first of all, I say, well, now keep your hand up and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear not to shoot the messenger. And so that's my you know, kind of fast paced humor laced in your face speaking style. Like my job is to hold up a mirror is, is in, in, with as much love as I can and help people look within. So, the, but what's interesting to say, all right, everybody raises their hand when they say, when I, how many of you have integrity? But then I said, well, hang on, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. I don't want to offend you. Let's, what is it? Yeah. And now it goes back to what we've talked about. I always get two answers, John. One person's going to say, somebody in the audience is going to say, do what you say you're going to do. Be your word. Okay, good. We'll put that on the board. And somebody else is going to say, do the same thing when nobody's watching as you would when somebody's watching. And when they say this, they go, be your word. And they go, do the right thing. And they have this vibration in their voices. Like they're mad at some person that's not in the room for not being their word or not doing the right thing. Yeah. So it's like, wait a second. You all agree that, you know, there's a vibration of judgment for others. And so the funny part is, is that integrity becomes like parenting or driving that we all think ourselves to be really good at. It's just everybody else sucks. Do you remember the, the, or, the, or yeah. George Car the old George Carlin bit? Like everybody driving faster than you on the freeway is a maniac and everybody yeah. driving slower than you on the freeway is a moron. So right. it's basically, I want to cut through autobiographical thinking. Does this make sense? And so when people... People associate with integrity. But if I started my keynote and say, how many of you want an external accountability source? Nobody would raise their hand. 
Yeah. But if I say, how many of you believe you have integrity? All the hands go up. So that's partly Trojan horse to get into the accountability conversation. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by the Salty Sailor Coffee Company, the official coffee of the Deep Leadership Podcast. Salty Sailor is a veteran-owned coffee brand on a mission to deliver premium, fresh roasted coffee while making a positive impact in the world. Their motto is drink coffee and do good, which reflects their commitment to making amazing coffee and actively supporting the military community. 10% of every order goes to the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, an organization dedicated to helping sailors, Marines, and their families in times of need. All our listeners get 10% off every order of their amazing coffee by using the discount code DEEP at checkout. So check them out at SaltySailorCoffee.com. This episode is brought to you by Leader Connect, a leadership training company and video platform founded by the leadership book author and Deep Leadership Podcast guest, Neil Jurd. Leader Connect is a video and podcast streaming platform for leaders and teams. Watch it alone or as a team, and each video supports you and your team, allowing you to improve performance and build a great culture. Join hundreds of experts and learn about leadership, planning, public speaking, team building, mindfulness, and a range of other subjects that will help you lead well and build a great team. I'm proud to say that I'm one of the experts on this platform. Leader Connect is offering a 10% discount to all deep leadership listeners. Go to leader-connect.co.uk and enter the code DEEP at checkout. Master your leadership with Leader Connect. You can say, I can look at people and say, that person has, has a high level of integrity. Like I've, I've observed that person over time. And yes. High level of, of integrity. So yes. It, it, so is, it sounds like it, it, it is. So we do have, we have, we have some preconceived notions about it. Right. And we yes. have some personal opinions about it. But it is it's, it is truly a measure of, of of performance, like that we can actually look at someone and say they have integrity. Okay, I, I yeah, I, I, yes and no. Okay. okay, yes and no. Okay, um, in other words, yes, because of our understanding, what do we think counts as integrity? And the people okay. that we observe, here's the right. So the people that we observe. And, you know, you've been in great positions, right? You've been you know, serving our country and the, the manufacturing companies and you're entrepreneurial and now you're in academia, right? So you get to, you know, you're not hanging out on the streets, right? So you, the, the larger percentage of the people that you hang out with are going to have a higher degree of integrity, okay? okay. But it's not from being, it's not what I'm trying to argue here is it's not just from being your word or doing the right thing because th- th- those, those two answers are good. We can observe people who do what they say they're going to do. We can observe people who do what we think is the yeah. right thing. Yeah. But where what I'm trying to invite everybody to consider is that how often do we ask somebody else, hang on a second, what is what do you think the right thing is? And are you doing what you think mm, okay. okay is right? So a lot of times we think we know what the right thing is and then we project that onto others. I mean, you know as well as I do, you, you know, our country is divided as ever, right? We can't agree on what's true. Yeah, or who's the president? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's like like serious yeah. misinformation or disinformation or different media streams. So what's the right thing? It's a moving target, right? Um, and to be more simple about it, let me get it's, it, it, like uh, we we would all agree. Oh, you should never lie. These people with high integrity. Right. High integrity. But maybe, maybe they do elf on a shelf and lie to their kids for 26 days at Christmas to guilt them mm-hmm. into good behavior. You know what I'm getting at, right? And so, like, th- my point is, be your word. Well, what if I said I was going to get? Uh, what if say if I was? What if I said I was going to sleep on the couch twenty of, uh, out of every twenty four hours, and then I did? I would have done what I said I was going to do, but I can't claim integrity, could I? What if I said I was going to get into my car and drive and hit the first pedestrian I saw, and then I got in my car and drove and hit the first pedestrian? Could I claim integrity just by doing what I said I was going to do? Mm. No, because we can play it safe, or we can say we're going to do unproductive or destructive things, right? So in other words, be your word is good, but to me, it's not enough you know, to really claim more integrity. And so the, the, there are people that walk around with great integrity. They know who they are. They have questions answered about their own life. And now their behavior is integrated with the answers that they have for themselves when we're talking about self-leadership, right? So what, the, what most common, most common is people don't answer questions for their own life, right? And now they sit in judgment of others because that's easier. It's easier to point a finger at others than to work on ourselves, 
point. So the idea is, I think these two answers, be your word and do the right thing. They're good, but not good enough. Because like sometimes the right thing is fools rush in or she who hesitates is lost. Those con- there's a contradictory. Time is money. Patience is a virtue. Or John, if you, if you never quit, you never lose, right? If you never quit, you never lose. Yeah. But you also need to know when to cut your losses. Yeah. So, yeah. so the right thing, especially for leaders, aren't we conflicted with like in any given situation, there might be seven leadership principles that we have to consider in order to arrive at the best decision. And we might be violating two or three leadership principles because the situation requires us to focus on the right leadership principle mm-hmm. for the moment. Hmm. So is it so, that we're confusing integrity with with uh, ethics and morality? Is that is that the issue? Because I think part of it when it comes to ethics it. and morality, I can see that there is absolutes, right? You know, there are things that you, you yes. know, that as a society we should not do, right? Yeah. And so don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Right. Exactly. And so yes. we think of at least I think of someone with integrity uh, is has the, has good moral virtues, right? That also you know that they're they're they they keep their word with respect to morality and ethics. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like where you're going with this. In my yeah. model, in my model, the integrity yeah. game, the morals and the virtues and the ethics are like the adhesive. Okay. Okay. They're they're the adhesive. They're the things that hold together the ten points on the model. Yeah. So, for example, um, well, first of all, by the way. Um, have you ever seen anybody with that you thought hmm, had questionable integrity or that you actually had so, said to yourself, Ooh, they're out of integrity or they don't have integrity or they could use more integrity? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how would, how would they go about getting it? Like well, in other words, I, yeah. How, if, if, if like what I'm giving my 10 point model, right. The integrity game is simply, it's very simple. It's easy to understand. It's difficult to play. Yeah. It's t- 10 topics, which become question sets. And the integrity game is, Hey, understand these 10 questions answer these 10 questions, see if your answers integrate or dilute each other, empower or disempower each other, share your answers with an external accountability source that loves you, and then see how much of your day-to-day actions are integrated with the answers that you have for yourself rather than being blown around like a feather in the wind or yeah. a pawn in somebody else's game, right? So it's, it's, it, it, it includes word in our relationship with our word, right? Uh, it, but it's again, like to me, just doing what you say you're going to do and just trying to do the right thing when nobody's watching, it's good, but not enough. And back to morals, ethics, and values, that's the adhesive that kind of holds. It's like, imagine shoelaces, right? Shoelaces yeah. were, right? Imagine five loops on one side and five loops on the other, and they go through. So the laces are the values, the morals, the ethics, the love, right? The intangibles, okay? That hold together the, the 10 points on the model. So the laces yeah. don't, laces don't tie the shoe. The, we tie the laces. What the laces are doing is integrating. And this is what I want to get together. Get the rid of the, the judgment from it, right? The integration, coming together of two or more things, right? Yeah. Nobody, when I ask what is integrity, people are going to have the, the ethics, the moral, the judge. You didn't do what you said you were going to do. You didn't do the right thing. But it's neutral. It's objective, just together or not together, integrated or not integrated. Yeah, but I, th- I would, from a leadership perspective, right, mm-hmm. one of the things that I always say that I, is I want to be a person of my word, right? So I yes. typically say I, uh, I under, uh, under, I under commit and over, overperform, right? So I, I don't, so my word is so important to me that I don't commit to a lot of things, right? right. And so Good. I, Good. and what I do commit to, I make sure that I get done because I have, I've created expectations for my employees, right? So yeah, that I, that, and I, and mm-hmm. I think that I, I, I am bothered if I can't perform to my word. So I'm very careful of what I promise. I'll even say to my employees, I don't want to make that promise right now because I don't know. There's an unknown out here and I can't make that commitment to you right now. Right. I only want to commit to what I'm 100% in control of. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, you're a cut above. And word slash commitment, that's one of the 10 points on the okay, model. Okay, okay. Right, so so that's one of the 10 points is word slash commitment. Not just like managing expectations and being our word like we talked yeah. about. But the power of words, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the vibration of words saying, you know, could versus should. Yeah. And want to versus have to. And hate versus dislike. So being careful about word choices and understanding their vibration and their potential, the ambiguity and how they may be decoded differently than how we're encoding. So the power and the care in word choice, but also managing expectations. So that's one point on the model. And in, in question form, you've got great answers to this. Right. But not everybody does. The question being, yeah. what's your relation? 
how careful are you with your words? What's your yeah. relationship to your word? How well do you manage expectations that you set for yourself and others? Yeah. Right. So that we want people to answer those questions. And we want people to be self-reflective about that piece of the 10 point model. But there's nine other pieces that we want answers to. So in other words, when some people, what is integrity? Somebody will say, well, be your word, right? I can eat I, all day long. I can hold somebody accountable to doing what they said they were going to do. Yeah. But what I yeah. want to know, that's transactional. Right. Transformational is why did you say you're going to do that? Yeah, yeah. Not just not just do what you said, but why did you say that? What is yeah. that tethered to? So one of the interesting thing is is I, I had a, a a a friend I used to work with uh, in my corporate days, and he used to always say, "Never be a hero on planning day." And so what he's saying <laughs> is is that don't be like because it. you can be a hero on planning day, where the bosses say we need a, a, a double your sales, and and the guy goes, "I'll do helium it. Helium hand, helium hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I'll do it right, and so." Everyone, everyone knows that he's lying. They, they can't be done, right? But he's just doing it to look good in that one meeting, right? And and we all know that is he's likely not gonna, gonna not gonna make that. So so the motivation behind making a promise that you know you're you likely not gonna take is it's that not, it's out of integrity. It's building a, that's a that's a mansion that that person is trying to build on quicksand. Yeah, right? but it's, but so, it's the so, why. So there's a why behind like yeah. I made a promise that I knew I couldn't fulfill, but there was a why behind it because I look good. On that day, you know? Yeah, well, that may not be the best why. So the no, first it's not point a good on, why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, first point, the first point on the integrity game model, the very first point is, you know, it's been around forever. It's called purpose, right? And so what's your purpose? So the integrity game invites people to answer questions like, in your opinion, what's the meaning of life? Why does life exist? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of life? Because if you have some sort of meaning around purpose of life, you might be one step closer to protecting, investing, optimizing life. If you have no concept of what life means, now you may not value it and optimize it, et cetera. But then let's go one step closer to your life. What's the meaning of your life? So uh, there's like, if I'm standing in front of a hundred entrepreneurs and I say, how many of you believe you have integrity? They all raise their hand and they say, good. Okay. Everybody write down your purpose statement and set it forward, please. It would be crickets. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people wondering, they don't know what their purpose is. And here's the thing, the integrity, and we don't care if your purpose tomorrow is different than your purpose today. What we care about is every day without one, because yeah. you might raise your hand purposeless, aimless, or with a, a defunct or a, a unsustainable purpose, right? You just might be trying to band-aid approach your way into feeling good about yourself when you haven't done the work of like, why am I here? What's my purpose in this company? Why am I in this career or this job? Yeah. Why am I on this team? Why am I raising my hand right now? It's just, you follow, we want something, right? So building a bridge or a tunnel will collapse under pressure tests without structural integrity. Well, so do individuals, teams, and organizations. So how do we retrofit an individual? How do we retrofit a team? And what I'm betting on is that my 10-point model makes it easier from a soft skill perspective, right? I believe soft skills make strong leaders. Soft skills make strong teams. Yeah, soft yeah. skills make strong organizations. So I want to make it actionable. I don't want to just say, hey, you're out, of, you're out of integrity. I want to say, hey, let's check out these 10 questions. Do you have answers to these 10 yeah, questions? Yeah. And so, so, yeah, go ahead. Let's use an example. So, you know, I, I, I mentioned before we press record that the, the purpose of the podcast is to build a world with better bosses. That's actually my purpose. In, and that's what I'm doing Perfect. in my life right now is to build, yeah. build a world with better bosses, try to influence many people towards good leadership. So that influences my integrity is what you're saying. Absolutely. Here, now here's the thing. If your purpose in life is to build better bosses. Now, what's cool about that is that any bright and shiny thing that comes along that does not integrate with yeah. that purpose, it's easy to not even notice it now because you're focused on what you're doing. It's easy yeah. to have an empowered no to that. Yeah. Like I, politics. Because, I don't follow politics at all. Right. I don't follow yeah. sports at all. Not, not yeah. interesting. Because it doesn't integrate. It doesn't, it doesn't serve fit. your purpose. Yeah. Yeah, right. You don't, You would have to be like, hey, if I can learn about how to make a better boss by watching this head coach or watching this politician, then you would. But if yeah. it doesn't integrate with your purpose, then it's an empowered no. Okay? Yeah. But you've seen like people volunteer for stuff. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And they're not doing it. They're not volunteering for things because that volunteerism is integrated with their purpose. They're actually covering up for the fact that they don't have purpose. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I, I, I get it. Does so, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you're helping me understand that. So yeah, so that's why people will commit to things that they don't 
necessarily or, or you know, and then, then and then they'll say later on, like, oh, uh, sorry, I couldn't make it. I, I know I said I was going to be there. But I didn't make it because they never really wanted to be there in the first place because it didn't fit with their with their purpose because they didn't have a purpose. Yeah, there was no there was no foundation in that commitment. There was yeah. nothing yeah. integrating that commitment to something larger that would motivate somebody to keep it. Right. There's there's other points on the model. Like the second point on the model is gifts. Right. What is our mindset around giving and receiving? What counts as a gift? Anything other than the average uh, God given man made self generated. Uh, and then, and then of course, what does that translate into competitive advantages? So how many people out there, they're gifted, but they're not investing in their gifts, optimizing their gifts and sharing their gifts. How many people are running from suffocating or hiding from their gifts? How many yeah, people yeah. do you know that would rather be told all day long what to do in something that they're miserable at than take on the responsibility of optimizing their gifts? Right. The vulnerability, the responsibility with great power comes great responsibility. So if I, What's, you know, so purpose gifts. Now we can get into potential vision, mission objectives when we're yeah, determining potential. Yeah. Then we could break it down into quarterly goal setting. So the four points, top four, top four points on the model, purpose, gifts, potential goals. So what's your purpose? What makes you better than anybody else or different than anybody else? What are your competitive advantages from a gifts perspective? Why do people want to recruit you, have you on the team, hire you, raise you, promote you, buy from you, then your competition. What do you do better than everybody else that also does it? What do you do that nobody else does? Mm. And are you aware of that? Are you developing that if you don't have it? Are you right? Are you just going to be the average or, you know, leadership, right? So if people don't know what their gifts are, or they're suffocating their gifts or running from their gifts, or they know that they're brilliant genius at something and they're, they're not doing anything about it. And so that's all subconscious. Oh, so they go and volunteer for these other things that seem easier. It makes yeah. sense. But if I know my purpose, I know my gifts, now I could imagine what my potential is. I could look out as far into my future as I can see, and I can describe what I see as my vision. Then I could be, you know, I'm on a mission to yeah. what, which is still ways away, but far out. And then what are my annual objectives then, if that's my mission? And then quarterly, I can get into smart goal setting. So the specifics, the measurability, the time bound, all of that. And so those are the first four points on the model. But you know, as well as I do, if you know anything about leadership, you know that like 3% of the population sets goals. Yeah. Right. If I walked into a room with a thousand people, I'd say, how many of you said goals? They'd all raise their hand. I'd say, all right, write your goals down and set them forward. It would be hopes, wishes, and dreams. Yeah. Instead I, have, of I have goals, goals in every part of my life. So yeah. Yeah. You have life without you, goals. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. 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 But, but you, you, you know, curse of knowledge, John, right? We curse yeah. of knowledge is when we've become so familiar with something that we've forgotten what it's like not to know. Yeah. And, and, yeah, you know, I, it's exciting to be able to hang out with leaders all day long and ambitions yeah. all day long and achievers all day long and type A's and entrepreneurial and, you know, uh, people that are thirsty for learning. Right. But that's rare. Yeah. You know, we are in the minority. Most of the world. Right. They're playing average. They're playing. They're trying to avoid accountability like the play. They're trying to do the bare minimum and get back to their. They're their, uh, think they enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Tension relieving rather than goal achieving activity. So most leaders in the world aren't leading, like, like, I don't know what the number is, but imagine the number, how many marbles in the jar, right? But basically how many leaders are there in the world <laughs> and how many people are being led by those leaders? So how many marbles in the people being led jar? There's a lot of people being led, a lot of marbles in that jar. How many of them are type A achievers, thirsty learners, professional growth seeking people versus how many of them are average or worse? So well, most, I think based on the engagement yeah. numbers, it's about, uh, it's less than 30%. <laughs> Less than 30% are alphas, achievers, right? Are, are, yeah, are, are leading, you know, consciously being, you know, making an effort to be great leaders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, making an effort to be great leaders, but let's just say, let's say there's five leaders, then how many people are being led? 500. Yeah. Right? So of those 500, how many of those are type A's? How many of those 500 are alphas? Yeah. How many of those are achievers? How many of those are go-getters? How many of those are lifelong learners and uh, you know, constantly working yeah. to improve and go get it. To you, it's normal. It's like breathing or blinking to be that way. But what I'm trying to get at is most people in this world that are being led yeah, are not achievers. They don't, yeah. they haven't answered questions for themselves. They're not aware of their purpose, their gifts, their potential. So they're, yeah. they're wasting time, yeah. wasting time, wasting time. So like one of the challenges of leadership is leading people who haven't done the self-leadership part. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. that are in the job just to get a paycheck or, you, you know what I mean, just to get home as soon as they can or to clock out at five or, you know, they're, they're, they're there not because of some bigger purpose. There, there's yeah. no integration between what they're being led towards 
for eight hours and the life they're leading for themselves. And uh, what, what the integrity game is trying to do is make sure that the people are engaged and they're motivated and, and they're willingly accountable. I want to make accountability non-threatening is what the integrity game is trying to do. I want to hold you accountable to your answers, not mine, yours. I, I love it. This is such a unique, Jeffrey, it's such a unique approach to, to looking at integrity. And I love what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. Um, how, how can our, if our listeners are like listening and say, oh, wow, this is interesting. Really, I want to get in. I want to understand more about it. Um, mm -hmm. How can they find out more about this integrity game? What's the best way to find out? Well, there's there's a couple of ways. Like, you know, yeah, I've done a lot of podcasts. So if you search for Integrity Game and podcasts, you know, I'm, I'm interviewed a lot and I'm talking about it a lot because I'm, I'm getting the word out there. But anybody, any especially listeners for your show, if they want to send me an email to info yeah. at getaclue.net, I will okay. give them a PDF copy of the book. It's a parable. There's a mentor okay. and a mentee. And the, anyway, there's a transformation in the 10 points on the model unveiled through the story. So it's a business parable to introduce the 10 point model. Okay. So, and then, and then you can go to the Integrity Game. It's right there, integritygame.com. There's a little video where I explain what it is and we're still building out the website. All the links may not be totally functional. We're building it, but there's a lot to learn about and I'm easy to find. And this is what I'm doing is I'm promoting the integrity game. I want to make accountability non-threatening so I'm inviting people to play. And I want more integrity in my life. So I'm just inviting the world to come with me on this journey. Like I want to retrofit myself. I want to be a better dad. I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better professor. I want to be a better entrepreneur. So I'm playing the integrity game myself and I'm inviting the world to play with me. I absolutely love this. It's so exciting. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put links in the show notes for the Jeffries resource. And again, go check this out. This is such a really interesting perspective on integrity because I think what Jeffrey's doing, he's challenging the the two main notions of what integrity really is. And and uh, and I think he's he's diving deeper into something that we as leaders need to be thinking about because again, we may be hard chargers and we may have a plan and we may, like, like me, I have goals for everything I'm working on. I'm focused on a mission. But a lot of the people we have working for us may not have that and may not know that. And so this can help us, you know, further that discussion with with our teams and help them become more uh, integrity, more have a higher level of integrity with themselves and with the people around them. So we're going to put links in the show notes for that. Uh, Jeffrey, this has been an exciting conversation. Right? You really brought an energy to it and a perspective that I never thought of before. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. Well, I appreciate you having me, John. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to keeping my eyes on your career. You're doing amazing things. I have a lot of respect for what you've done for our country and what you're going to continue to do for um, all the people that you serve. So thank you, John. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for what you're doing on Integrity. So, so important. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Peter. We're the founders of Electrocast Media, bringing you great podcasts like Nightmare Road Stories, Tech Talk Revolution, and Bodacious Minds. Electrocast networks include Ruby for female empowerment, the best business network, and GPN for geopolitics. We built this company to create community and amplify diverse voices, and we really appreciate your support. So, keep listening to Electrocast Podcasts and hear the culture. Electricast. Hey guys, it's Miriam Love here, and I want to share something very special with you. Check out my new release, All In, the Spanish remixes, out now on Electricast Records. And always remember, be love, share love, all love. Available now wherever you listen to music. One, two,